and welcome to episode 31 of a slice of pie podcast. My name is Kat Loftus. Thank you for tuning in. Gosh, 31 episodes. Who knew that something that began as a whim at the real estate office last summer with Luke Gordon would turn into 31 episodes. So thank you so much for listening every week and tuning in. And thank you to our guests who have agreed to be on the show. Um, we have a lot of people that are starting to ask to be on the podcast. So if you would like to be on the podcast and tell your story, just send me a text and we'll be glad to feature you one week. Um, we do have some interesting guests coming up. This week's guest is Antonio Robinson. Antonio is a freshman at Coastal Carolina University. He graduated from Waccamaw High. And I used to watch Antonio run um, the hurdles uh, during track season. And, and Anna Margaret, my, our daughter, was there, and she was running. And so I watched all the other kids, too, and I would see Antonio doing his events. And he's such a nice young man, so polite. Uh, he's a good athlete. He ran track, and he did some football. But I don't think he's doing sports anymore. I think he's just mostly focused on his studies and getting good grades at Coastal Carolina. So we had a great talk with him. And the reason why I wanted to talk with him, not only do I like Antonio, but where he lives. So uh, in Polly's Island, over by the river, we have an island called Sandy Island. It's an inland island. So there's a road from Highway 17 called Sandy Island Road. You go down that road, and at the end, you'll see some cars parked. So cars have to park there, go down to the landing, take a boat to get over to Sandy Island. And then the residents, there's about 20 homes over there and 40, 50 people. Um, and then when they want to come back, if they got to go to work or the grocery store, they get in their boat, come back over to the landing, leave the boat there, and then get in their car and drive to where they have to go. So certainly a different kind of lifestyle. Also, there's a school bus boat that services Sandy Island. So the school bus boat will leave the landing go pick up the children from the island, bring them back over to the landing, and then put them on a yellow school bus to get to their school. So we're one of the few school districts that has a school bus boat, which is kind of cool. So Antonio tells us about what it's like to live on Sandy Island, and but he didn't grow up there. He grew up um, in some other cities, so you'll hear about that and his adjustment to living on Sandy Island and what he's doing now and what he plans to do in the future. Also, uh, you see I have my coat on still. It's still a little chilly here. It's uh, I think it's about 50 degrees right now. We're kind of in a range of from 40 at night to like 57 during the day. And I think we're going to stay in this temperature range for a couple more weeks. But I'm super excited for us to get up into the 60s a little bit more and uh, not the 40s, but move up this way more. So we'll get there eventually. But I am encouraged by the light. We have lots of light right now. And the, the days are getting longer and longer. And that must have encouraged um sellers to start selling their houses because one day I was in my office and the switch just must have flipped and I got phone call after text after phone call uh after email oh I'm ready to sell my house and I thought wow it's got like flowers opening up in the spring so if you're thinking about buying you might want to do it now before too much activity starts happening and those prices go up um but I'm excited to have houses to sell and um we're getting those ready for you so they'll be listed soon and a lot of the agents in our office have listings that are uh, going live real soon. So a lot of activity starting here in the spring with real estate. Um, but I know you're going to love this podcast with Antonio. We're also getting requests from other groups and individuals that want to be on the podcast. And if you're one of those people that would like to be featured on a slice of pie, just give me a text, send me a text or email, call me or let somebody else know. And they'll get in touch with me. Um, we certainly want to feature every story every group, every interesting person here in our town. So just give me a call and we'd love to have you on the podcast. So we hope you enjoy this episode 31 with Antonio Robinson. So sit back and enjoy episode 31 of a slice of pie podcast. Antonio, what are you doing right now? Picking out this embroidery on this shirt. Why are you taking it out? Mm -hmm. Is there a mistake? Yeah, it's just the names. Oh, okay. They're coming out relatively easy, though. So. That's good that you can do that. <laughs> Hi, Antonio. Hey. Um, thank you for joining us on my podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever been on a podcast before? Never. No. Have you ever listened to a Slice of Pie podcast before? I have, yes. You have? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I'm glad. A lot of times when I ask my guests that, they say they don't <laughs> So thank you for listening. I appreciate that. Okay. Antonia, the first time I saw you, I think it was at a Waccamaw High track meet. And mm -hmm. did you do the hurdles? Yes. Hurdles. 
I remember your dad would come watch you, mm -hmm. I think. Is that right? Yeah. What other event did you do in track? Uh, just javelin and shot put and discus, and then the 4x1 and 4x4 occasionally. That, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you also play football? Yes. Yeah, I never saw you play football. What was your position in football? <laughs> I played linebacker. I think that's on defense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, okay, good. But um, you are a very nice young man, and Thank I think you. the people in Polly's Island need to know more about you, so that's why I wanted you to be my guest. Um, so I want to kind of go back and start at the beginning, and if you would tell our listeners um, where you were born and where you grew up. Uh, I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Do you remember anything about Minneapolis? Do you remember any of the snow or anything? Yes, there was plenty of it, yes. Did you like to play in it? Mm -hmm. You did? I miss it sometimes. Do you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to you earlier because I said it was a little bit of a chilly day here. You say you don't mind the cold weather. And to an extent, like anything below 20. Oh, nah, <laughs> but you're good with anything 50, 30 yeah, to 50? Just nothing. Yeah, that's freezing for me. <laughs> but okay, so Minneapolis, do you remember how old you were when you moved from there? I was either six or seven. Okay. I, I think I was six. So maybe you went to kindergarten in Minneapolis or something? Yeah. Okay. I went there. Mm -hmm. And then I believe it was either first or second grade, either at the end of first grade or the beginning of second grade. You moved to Georgia? Mm -hmm. Where'd y'all move to in Georgia? Atlanta. Georgia. Atlanta. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then you started going to elementary school there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what part of Georgia you were from? It was called Stockbridge. Stockbridge. Okay. So you were there for how long? Uh, until from 2012 to like 2019. Okay, what what is the last grade you went to at Stockbridge? I moved at right at the very end of eighth grade. I still had like a month or two left and then moved here. Yeah, okay. So now my brain is starting to think about COVID because you and Anna Margaret are the same age, right? Mm -hmm. So were y'all in ninth grade or 10th grade when COVID hit? We were in ninth grade. It was like the second semester, right? Right, it was March. Start, yeah. March, okay, yeah. So you come to a new school, and did you like it at first? Did you like Walk on High at first? Mm, a little. Did you think it was too small? Yeah, because the old school I, used, I was going to go to uh -huh. was 5A. There was like 2,000-some kids. Yeah, yeah, so from 2,000 to 800. <laughs> That's a pretty big difference. Um, so, so did you make any friends that first semester? Yeah, just through the classes I was in. Were you t playing any sports at all then? I was doing football and then track, but that got canceled. Yeah. I remember we went to one track meet. I think it was in mm -hmm. Somerville. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting with some moms and I said, I bet this is the last track meet today. And it was because mm -hmm. everything else was like getting canceled on that day. It was crazy. It was strange. So then y'all were out of school the rest of that year. And then in the fall, I don't know if y'all went back to school in the fall, or were you doing um, that learning on your computers at home, maybe? Asynchronous. I think we started on, like, the computers, and then we did, like, the, like, A through a certain letter go Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. And then... Nobody on Wednesday. No. And then yeah. some kids go on Thursday, mm -hmm. Friday. Because I was teaching second grade, and that's what we did, split the class. It was strange, for sure. You couldn't really cover a lot of material because you had to teach one group. And have to teach another group. It was it was different. Um, it wasn't a good time for teenagers, I don't think. Nah, it was. Well, teenagers like to be together mm -hmm. and you like to socialize, and that was just what COVID was is keeping everybody apart. So it was a little mm -hmm. sad. Um, but eventually, in at the no, because Cubby was graduating. So y'all got to go back to school, I think, in February maybe of your tenth grade year. Yeah. Yeah, and then 11th grade, it was more normal. Mm -hmm. more normal. Okay. Um, why did y'all move back to Polly's Island? My dad just wanted to move back home mm -hmm. on the island. So he is from Sandy Island. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you think? Had you ever seen Sandy Island before? I've been I've been here like a handful of times before we moved here, uh -huh. but it was a big adjustment having to take the boat to get to my house and everything. It is. Okay, for our listeners who don't know about Sandy Island, let's talk about that for a little bit. It is an inland island. Mm -hmm. And what makes it an island, Antonio? It's completely surrounded by water. There's no bridges or yeah. anything. I think it's Waccamaw River on one mm -hmm. side. And I don't know, is it the P I, PD maybe? I think so. I just know Waccamaw. Yeah, Waccamaw on one side of the island. And PD goes around the other side. And there is no road to get over to that island. Mm -hmm. There, So when you go home, you go down Sandy Island Road. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, everybody parks their cars here. And then yeah. there's a landing. 
and then either people have a boat or you wait on some other boat to come take you. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's bizarre. I mean, I guess when people get groceries, they just take a boat over, mm -hmm. then get in their car and drive to the grocery store. Yeah. Wow. Um, so did you mind that at all? Did you ever mind? It was a little bit weird at first. I wasn't really used to it, uh -huh. the whole idea of taking a boat every day. And then it kind of got worse over COVID because I was pretty much just stuck over there. Oh, my gosh. I didn't yeah. think about that. And then once we started going back to school, I was really fine with it. I didn't mind it at all. How many other kids live on Sandy Island? Now there's four or five. Uh huh. And how many how many grown ups you think are there now? Around forty, I think. Oh, four as many as that? Yeah, I think so. How many houses do you think are over there? That are lived in now, there's probably I'm gonna guess around twenty. Twenty. Yeah. And there are some houses that are not lived in? Yeah, there's it was a rice plantation, so uh -huh. there's a bunch of like old like of the Slave quarters and there, everything. There are slave quarters mm -hmm. there, like little cabins mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. I, I want to go visit. I've never toured, but you can take a tour over there, right? Mm -hmm. I need to do that. Um, so you <laughs> got Minneapolis, Atlanta, and then not just to Polly's Island, but to Sandy Island. That mm -hmm. is quite an adjustment. But you seem to have done well. You seem to have made a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like you um, at Walk My High. But um, you've graduated now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here. Oh, Filming this in Miss Donna Anderson's shop. Um, what's the name of her store? Island Specialties. Island Specialties. We love Island Specialties. She does all the embroidery. Mm -hmm. You work on some of the embroidery too, don't you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show a clip of you working on that. But she's got a lot of great gifts here, um, a lot of great things to get, take to the beach, and a lot of great exercise wear. So if our listeners haven't been in Island Specialties, you need to come in to see Antonio <laughs> and to see all the neat things that are in here. I'm sure you'll find something you want here. And just to say hello to Donna, she's such a nice person. Mm -hmm. She really is. Um, Okay, so you graduate from Waukesha High, and then t where did you go next? Uh, I went to Coastal Carolina. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you like it? For the most part, yeah. Do you stay over there, or do you come back and forth? Do you commute back and forth? I stay up there. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, what are you studying? Health science. What do you have to be one day? Still not sure yet. Uh huh. Gonna go through that. Uh -huh. Probably decide next year. Do you want to go in the medical field? Yeah. Okay. I know for a fact I want to do something in the medical field. Okay, you could, exactly you could either be a nurse, a doctor, mm -hmm. a trainer, a mm -hmm. therapist, any or all of those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, good. That's exciting. Okay, and um, so how often do you come back to Island Specialties to work here? Sometimes just once a week, sometimes twice. Uh -huh. It just really depends on how much, how many orders we have to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I remember one time I was in here and I asked you how school was going and you said, what's the class that was giving you the hardest time? Spanish. Which I think is funny because, I mean, I, I took Spanish. I remember I had some difficulty at first because I was just a lazy student and I wasn't doing well, but I got better at it. But you think you're good. You, what's your grade now in Spanish? I have an A. You have an A. So we hope you can finish out with that A. A or B would be good. Yeah. yeah. Bueno. Okay. So I hope you do it. Um, so you're a freshman. So you enjoy the life over there. You think you're going to stay at Coastal? Yeah. Do you go to any of the sporting events over there? I go to like some of the soccer games. There's uh -huh. baseball just started. So I'm they have a, a great of baseball those. team. Yes, they do. They do have a really great yeah. baseball team. They also have um, a good girls running team. I was They were having an mm -hmm. indoor track meet up at Clemson, and I know that this, the Coastal team was doing really good. I think they have a history of, of good running teams at Coastal. Um, okay. I'm going to go back and ask you some more questions about Sandy Island for just a second. Um, so in your years when you were in high school, are there times when you were had um, I have to stay after school late or you had an athletic event and you would just stay with somebody over here in Paula's Island? Yeah. I know one of those families. Do you know who I'm thinking of? Kelly's. Who? The Kelly's. No. Did you stay at the Kelly's house? Yeah. Okay. No, but they're very nice. I like the Kelly's a lot. The Cassis. Did you ever stay yeah. at the, the Cassis house? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, the, you know the Hodos? I do. Yeah. There, yeah. Uh-huh. And then... At my grandma's house in Georgetown, if I had to. Wow. So you mm -hmm. had a lot of cool places that you could say. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. You have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Her name is Sam. Sam and Sam's at Coastal, Coastal too. Yes, yeah. What's she studying? Uh, sustainability and coastal resilience. That's cool. Does she ever work in here? Yeah. She does like the first two Saturdays of the month. Because I know Miss Dawn is all about sustainability mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's very cool. Okay. Um, 
Is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners about your philosophy on life or what you want to be when you grow up or anything like that? Um, kind of just go with the flow. Uh -huh. I mean, I'll do whatever it takes I, to like succeed and everything yeah, yeah. and just try my best. So you want to get your four-year degree mm -hmm. and then you'll make a decision at that point whether to get a job or you think you'll go back and get a graduate degree one day? I will eventually. Uh -huh. Either just my master's or if I'm really willing, I might get my doctorate uh -huh. too. Wow. Know, do you like to read? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you do all the time or anything like that. Yeah. Um, how about write? Are you a very good writer? I can write a five-page paper in 30 minutes. So So it doesn't bother you. Mm -hmm. That's good because mm -hmm. a lot of people just are stumped when they have a writing assignment. That's that's a, actually a gift. When I taught school, I usually would have one student per year that just was a really good writer. Um, and so I love reading children's writing and students' writing when they're good writers. So keep that craft going because there, there are not many people that are good writers. That's a good skill to have. Um, where would you like to live when you get older? Do you know? I want to move to like a big city at first, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then once I finally like fully settle down and everything, I'll probably find somewhere like in the suburbs somewhere. Somewhere like here, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it's good to go out and have experiences when you're young. Mm -hmm. You can always come back here. That's yeah. what I told my kids. You can always come back here, but go have some experiences first. Okay. Um, I didn't ask you about your family. I'm sorry. So tell me about your family first. Uh, my dad at home right now. What's uh, your dad's name? Tony. Tony, okay. Mm -hmm. Are you named for him? Yeah, okay. we're both Antonio. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, but your mom passed away. Yeah. How old were you when your mom passed away? Can't remember exactly. I think 12. You were 12, mm -hmm. okay. And she passed away from lupus. She mm -hmm. said complications from lupus. Yeah. God bless you. But you have a great tattoo. Do you remember her back when we showed? Yeah. So it says Christina. That's beautiful. Thank you. You must have loved her a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you have some siblings? Yeah, I have an older brother. And what's his name? Cameron. Where does he live? He's in Valdosta, Georgia, I think. Yeah, yeah. I know where that is. That's kind of getting close to the... Like right before Florida. Florida, Georgia Florida. line. Yeah. yeah, right there. Okay. What does he do? He's like the manager of a Walmart, I think. Oh. He's okay. going, like, he's on track to be like the general manager there. Uh-huh. So. Is he considerably older than you? He's only five years old. Oh, five years. Wow. Well, he sounds like he's a hard worker. Yeah. Well, good. Um, is there anything else you'd like? Do you, uh, would you like to say anything to your friends? Do you miss any of your friends? Uh, no, I hate all of you. <laughs> That's um, so funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, I miss y'all sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. They know who they are. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, sometimes y'all would have some get togethers when mm -hmm. you're seniors in high school. Santa Margaret would tell me he was there and stuff. And she said it was always a fun time. But she yeah. said, um, those were the days, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those were the days. But I think Paul's Island is a nice place to be. What do you like about living in Paul's Island? How connected everyone is uh -huh. and like how close everything uh -huh. is. Cause I was, I was used to like, when I lived in Georgia, I would have to drive kind of far to like go do things uh -huh. here. Like the beach is, all right down the road yeah. there's stores restaurants mm -hmm. even like car dealerships if you want to get a car right. do you like to go to the beach yes what do you do at the beach either play just go in the water uh -huh. or uh -huh. sit there and relax with my friends yeah or like okay. throw a football just around. chill yeah. okay cool do you ever like to do anything in the river mm. If I, like if my cousins are going, I'll go with them. Uh -huh. Like over to Blaine, uh -huh. like the beach. Uh -huh. If they go, I'll go. But other than that, I don't really. You know, you don't really it. enjoy the. You don't want the fish or anything like that. The alligators. Oh, I forgot about the alligators. Mm -hmm. There are alligators in the Waccamaw River because that's fresh water, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it would be on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I guess when it's like springtime, they would be out everywhere yeah but as it gets hotter and hotter they sink down a little mm -hmm. bit to get to the cool water yeah, I forgot about that. you really were trapped during covid weren't you <laughs> yeah you're not gonna go put your feet in the water on the bank of the river wow yeah but we kind of get used to the alligators mm -hmm. are you afraid of alligators not anymore you, i mean like i'll just look at them and you have respect for them yeah but we don't i hope them. everybody knows definitely do not feed the alligators no. No, mm -hmm. because that's their fear. They have that natural fear of us. Mm -hmm. But once somebody starts feeding alligators, then they'll come closer and closer mm -hmm. and closer to you. Uh, one time, I used to keep children at my house during the summer. We had a little camp called Miss Cat's Camp. Mm -hmm. So one day a week, we would take them to go crabbing. 
And um, so we have to get some chicken necks and tie some string around them and take them to a little crabbing spot. And so I'd gotten all the chicken necks ready in the string and we went to the place and here comes some alligators. And I said, oh, they'll go away, but um, they weren't. And then I said, I do not want them taking my chicken necks because I worked hard on this. So I went to get the chicken necks and they started coming onto the bank. I thought they can have the chicken necks. The, obviously those alligators had been fed mm -hmm. and they were not afraid of me at all. So we all know don't feed the alligators. And really, they don't bother me either because usually if I'm in a golf cart or something, they just go right back in the water if you go by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you think they're afraid of most people on Sandy Island? No one really messes with them unless we're like purposely like trying to catch them and like cook them and eat them. But other than that, yeah, they don't go too close. Yeah, and they are protected. If they're in the water, they're protected. Mm -hmm. I think if they come on the bank and stay in somebody's yard, they become a nuisance. You can call, you can call DNR, and they will come. Yeah, it's them. like the same with them and, like, hogs because they, like, Oh, uh, do you have hogs on Sandy Island? Yeah. How, like, big? Do y'all hunt? Do y'all take care of them? We try. Like, if they come in, like, our backyard or anything, yeah, we'll just deal with them right there. And sometimes we, like, go back purposely looking for them and, like, deer. Show me how big with your hand one of the hogs is. I had a... Pet one actually, well, not really a pet. I don't know what happened to it. It ran away. I think uh -huh. it was probably about like that long. Yeah, but how high off like, the ground? Yeah, about right there. Is yeah. that about how big all of them are? For the most part, some of them are like really big for no reason. The other but, ones are But tiny. none of them have the tusks. Uh, no, no. No, because um, I don't know if you know who Miss Lee Brockington is, but she's a great storyteller and historian who lives around here. I've had her on my podcast. And she said, um, we have a lot of, she calls them feral swine, or it's like wild pigs. Because mm -hmm. on the plantations, there were a lot of wild pigs, mm -hmm. and they just got let go. And they've just continued to roam around. Now, a boar is that big, big male with that tusk, tusk that come, come out. out. So there is a difference between wild pigs and the boar, just in case people didn't know. Alligators and our wild pigs. And you say you have deer, mm -hmm. foxes. I think I saw one. I'm not quite too sure. Yeah. My cousin said she saw a bear one time, apparently. The, a little black uh, bear? No, like a big one, apparently. A black bear, yeah. So we did, there are black bears, you know, up toward Myrtle Beach. And there was one year one was coming down the highway, and everybody was seeing it. It came all the way down to Pauly's Island. And they finally caught it. It went through a restaurant in Myrtle's Inlet and scared everybody. They stood up on hmm. He's just looking for some food. But he wasn't a really big bear. But everybody was so excited to see that bear coming down <laughs> Well, he would spend some time in the different, different neighborhoods before moving on. Um, do you have any coyotes? I think so. I, I'm i not quite too sure. I haven't seen them with my own eyes, but like my dad said he's seen them. So I'm assuming, yeah, but you never know. We have a couple in our neighborhood, but they, they'll try and take them out. But they, they do howl. And they woke me up in the middle of the night one night, and my dog wanted to go out, and I wouldn't let my dog go out. But they'll take cats away. They'll take mm -hmm. anything. They're hungry. I don't like the coyotes. I don't mind deer. Would even mind wild pigs. Alligators don't bother me. Hey, do you have any pretty birds over there? Yeah, there's a woodpecker that's like, it's only found on the island. Uh -huh. I don't think I think it's. The is it, only is place it a red? It's not a red it, cockaded. Red cockaded. That's what it is. Red cockaded woodpecker. Red, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's only found there. Do you have many groups that come through that are touring Sandy Island? Yeah, for I think there's at least one a day. Oh, wow. As many yeah. as that? One a day. Mm -hmm. um, and you said your cousin gives tours? Yeah, Romy Pyatt. Romy Pyatt. Mm -hmm. How do people get in touch with him? Uh, he has like a Facebook page. I think he has an Instagram page and he has a website. It's called Tours Day Sandy Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So mm -hmm. if anybody wants to tour Sandy Island, go to the, one of those sites, either a Facebook page, yes. Instagram page, mm -hmm. or website, okay. Tours Day Sandy Island. Yes. Is that right? Okay. All right. Um, well, thanks so much for taking your time. I, you were at work and I, you stopped work. But hey, Donna, he he did finish his job. I didn't I didn't interrupt you. He was working really hard. Um, but we wish you much continued success at, at Coastal, and we hope you make an A in Spanish and all your other classes. And y'all come see Antonio here at Island Specialties. I I hope you see you soon. Thank Bye, you. Antonio. All right. And Tony was so nice and patient to answer all my questions. I hope you enjoyed listening to him. And I enjoyed finding out that he was originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota, playing in snow. Um, and I hope Antonio continues to do real well at Coastal Carolina, making good grace. I know he'll be very successful. He's a very hardworking young man. Next week, we'll have some new guests, so we'll hope you'll tune in to those. Also, please rate, review, subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Um, and 
if you're watching basketball or baseball, I hope your team's winning. I'm enjoying watching basketball and baseball a lot. We really appreciate you following along with us. So until we see you again, have a great week. Bye. Thank you.